Hello, welcome to my video series of algorithms. This is part 8 of module 1, sorting algorithms. In this video, we will discuss the quicksort algorithm. Quicksort, as the name suggests, is a fast sorting algorithm in general cases. In the worst case scenario, it runs in O n square time. But it has an O n log n running time on average. Quicksort is also an in-place sorting algorithm. When properly implemented, the quicksort algorithm can run efficiently in practice. In its high-level design, quicksort is similar to merge sort in that both try to sort the elements by dividing them into smaller subsets. However, there are two major differences. First, while the merge sort algorithm partitions the input list into two equal-sized subsets, Quicksort does not impose any constraints on the sizes of the subsets. Second, in each sorting phase, merge sort spends its major effort on combining two smaller sorted lists into one. But Quicksort spends its major effort on finding the proper location for a selected element. Let's take a look at the main idea of Quicksort. Given a list of elements to sort, it first tries to select an element from the list, hereafter referred to as the pivot. The selection of the pivot can be arbitrary. Then, it will divide the list into two subsets. One contains all elements that are smaller than or equal to the pivot, and the other contains all elements that are larger than the pivot. In this case, the pivot is put into the correct location of the sorted list. We can compare each element with the pivot and partition the elements based on the comparison results. After the partition, the algorithm will recursively partition each subset until the sizes of the subsets drop below a threshold W. At this point, we will sort the subsets brute force. The parameter W is usually set to a small number, such as 3. In this case, even brute force sorting can be complete quickly. Here is a toy example. In the first row, we have a list of input elements 2, 8, 0, 3, 7, 4, and 2. So we always pick the first element as the pivot. In this case, we select 2. Based on the algorithm, we partition the entire input list into two subsets. In the second row, we can see that the orange subset contains 2 and 0, which correspond to all elements in the input that are smaller than or equal to the pivot. Since the subset contains less than 3 elements, all elements will be sorted brute force. On the other hand, the green subset contains 8, 3, 7, and 4, which correspond to all elements that are larger than the pivot. We select the first element 8 as the pivot for the new recursion. In the third row, we can see that elements from the previous orange set are sorted, and elements from the previous green set are partitioned. Here, the new orange set contains 3, 7, and 4, which correspond to all elements that are smaller than the pivot 8. Since the set contains only 3 elements, we can also sort them brute force. Finally, in line 4, we obtain a sorted list of the input elements. As we walk through the algorithm, you may notice that the two subsets may not have equal sizes. In the worst case scenario, if we always select the smallest element as the pivot, then the smaller subset will always be empty. In this case, each partition phase can only help us identify the smallest element, which is the pivot. And the quicksort algorithm degrades to the selection sort algorithm, which runs in n square time. This is the worst case time complexity for the quicksort algorithm. So, to avoid the worst case scenario, we hope that we can select a pivot that partitions the input list into two equal size subsets. In other words, we wish that we can choose the median in the set to be the pivot. 
However, finding the median from an unsorted list is itself a non-trivial problem. Luckily, we can devise a simple strategy to select a not-so-bad pivot. We can randomly select three elements from the list and pick the median among the three elements as the pivot. Say we have implemented this simple strategy as a function select pivot. Recall that we claim quicksort to be an in-place sorting algorithm. However, a direct implementation of the partition algorithm seems to involve data copying and requires additional space. Hence, we need an in-place partition algorithm. Let's look at the details. Say we are sorting elements in an array A. And in the current phase, we are partitioning elements in the range from S to E, inclusively. Also, say we have picked AP as the pivot. We begin with initializing two pointers I and J, where I is set to S and J is set to E minus 1. Then, we swap AP with AE. Know that now the pivot is stored at AE. Now, we will keep increasing the pointer i until we see some AI that is larger than or equal to the pivot. Meanwhile, we will keep decreasing the pointer j until we see some AJ that is smaller than or equal to the pivot. Then, we swap AI and AJ. Know that the goal of the swap is to ensure that all elements before the index i are smaller than or equal to the pivot, and all elements after index j are larger than or equal to the pivot. We will continue the process until i becomes larger than or equal to j. In this case, we have all elements from as to aj being smaller than or equal to the pivot. This is because when decreasing the index j, it will stop when aj is smaller than or equal to the pivot. And we'll have all elements from ai to ae minus 1 being larger than or equal to the pivot. This is because when decreasing the index j, it has passed the location i. In this case, either that it has made ai larger than the pivot by swapping, or that it has confirmed AI to be larger than the pivot without swapping. Finally, know that AI is larger than the pivot AE, but AI is before AE in the list. Therefore, we swap AI and AE and place the pivot to AI. Taken together, we have made AI the pivot, or elements before AI smaller than or equal to the pivot, and all elements after AI larger than or equal to the pivot. Hence, we have put the pivot into the correct location. Let's go over a toy example to see how the partition algorithm works. Say we begin with the list of elements shown in the first row, and we select 6 as the pivot. In the second row, we swap the pivot 6 and the last element 7. And we set the pointer i to the first position and the pointer j to the second last position. In the third row, we begin increasing i and decreasing j. We found that the first element i is pointing to is larger than the pivot 6, and the first element j is pointing to is smaller than 6. In this case, we swap the elements stored in i and j. In the second row, we continue increasing i and decreasing j, and stop at 8 and 5, respectively. In the third row, we swap 8 and 5. Then, we continue increasing i until we see 9, which is larger than the pivot 6. We also decrease j until we see 3, which is smaller than the pivot 6. In the second row, we then swap 9 and 3. In the third row, we'd increase i to 0.29, which is larger than the pivot 6. For j, we no longer need to decrease it, since it equals to i now. At this point, we have complete scanning the entire list. Finally, we swap 9, 
which is pointed by i, with the pivot. We can verify the resulting list to see that all elements smaller than or equal to the pivot 6 are placed before it, and all elements that are larger than or equal to 6 are placed after it. Say we have implemented the algorithm as a function partition, and the function returns the index i where the pivot is being stored. The above partition procedure runs in on time, as each element is only examined once by the pointers i and j. It is also in place as we only perform data swaps. Note that the above partition procedure can be implemented efficiently that takes advantage of the prefetch feature of the modern computer architecture. This is because the increment of the index i corresponds to sequential data access, in which case the data is likely preloaded in memory. It makes the quicksort algorithm run faster than heap sort, whose percolation procedure contains numerous non-sequential data accesses. It also makes it faster than merge sort, which makes a lot of data copying. Now, let's summarize the complete quicksort algorithm. Assume that we have three functions available. They are the simple heuristic method for the pivot selection procedure, select pivot, the on time in place partition procedure, partition, and the brute force sorting algorithm, sort. Here is the pseudocode for the quick sort algorithm. It is implemented as a recursive function. Line 2 handles the boundary case. Line 3 partitions the list into two subsets. Lines 4 and 5 recursively sort the subsets. OK, now let's analyze the correctness of the algorithm. We will use mathematical induction to prove the correctness. First, consider the partition procedure. When it completes, we have all elements that are smaller than or equal to the pivot being placed before the pivot and no elements that are larger than or equal to the pivot being placed after the pivot. It implies that the pivot has been placed in the correct location. If we can sort the two subsets respectively, then we can show that the entire list is sorted. While the algorithm does not explicitly sort the two subsets, we can show that they are actually sorted. If the subsets are large, the algorithm will recursively break down the subsets until they become small enough. In this case, they will be sorted brute force. When the subsets are sorted, together with that the pivot is placed in the correct location, we can conclude that the entire list is sorted. And by reversing the above logic, we can use math induction to complete the proof. Then, let's look at the time complexity. Earlier in this video, we discussed how the quicksort algorithm could degrade to selection sort in the worst case scenario, which requires on square time to run. Here, we will focus on analyzing its average case time complexity. First, denote Tn as the time required by the algorithm to sort n elements. We can then write Tn as the sum of Ti, Tn minus i minus 1, and Cn. The parameter i describes the size of the first subset, which is a random variable. In this case, ti corresponds to the time to sort the first subset, tn minus i minus 1 corresponds to the time to sort the second subset, and cn corresponds to the time required by the partition procedure. Note that c is a constant that converts the linear time complexity on to the actual running time. The problem now becomes to solve the recursion and estimate Tn. Since the sizes of the two subsets, i and n minus i minus 1, are both random variables, Ti and Tn minus i minus 1 are also random variables. In this case, we will represent the average case scenario using their expected values. We approximate Ti and Tn minus i minus 1 as the average time required to sort different sizes of inputs, ranging from 0 to n minus 1. Note that the maximum value is n minus 1 because the pivot is not included in any of the subsets. 
Therefore, we can rewrite Tn as 2 times the sum of the running time for inputs with all sizes divided by n, then plus Cn. To solve Tn, we will first multiply n to both sides of the equation. We can do this since n is the size of the input and positive. This will give us the first equation shown in the slide. We then substitute n in the equation with n minus 1 and obtain the second equation shown in the slide. Finally, we subtract the second equation from the first one and obtain the third equation. Subsequently, we simplify the equation and get n times tn equals to n plus 1 times tn minus 1 plus 2cn minus c. Divide both sides of the equation by n times n plus 1. We get tn divided by n plus 1 equals to tn minus 1 divided by n plus 2c divided by n plus 1 minus c divided by n times n plus 1. Again, note that we can do this because n times n plus 1 is positive. Then, we can list the equations evaluated at different input sizes. When we sum up all equations, notice that many terms can be cancelled out. Finally, we get Tn divided by n plus 1 equals to T1 divided by 2 plus 2c times the sum of 1 over i, where i ranges from 3 to n plus 1, plus c divided by n plus 1 minus c over 2. The sum of 1 over i corresponds to the harmonic series, which is in the order of O log n. Simplifying the equation by multiplying n plus 1 on both sides, we get Tn is in the order of O n log n. For space complexity, recall that we discussed the in-place partition procedure earlier in this video. Since no other data copying is involved in the algorithm, we claim that the quicksort algorithm is an in-place sorting algorithm. In summary, we have discussed the quicksort algorithm in this video. The algorithm runs in on square time in the worst case and on log n on average. It is also an in-place sorting algorithm. Finally, we know that when implemented properly, the quicksort algorithm can run faster in practice than the other on log n sorting algorithms, such as heap sort and merge sort. Thank you for watching and see you next time.